We're going to read here now in the Bible, in the book of Judges chapter 7, something that's going to answer this question. It's going to answer this question. Where does trust in God come from? Because we're going to read here now a moment in Gideon's life that he had to show a complete trust in God. And you will understand where that trust came from. So let us go to the Bible. Judges 7 verse 1. The Bible says, Then Jerubal, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the well of Herod so that the camp of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moreh in the valley. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Least Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now therefore, proclaiming the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And 22,000 of the people returned, and 10,000 remained. So if 22,000 left, 10,000 remained, how many people were there to fight? 22 plus 10, 32,000. So from 32,000, the army of Gideon was reduced to 10,000. But the Lord said to Gideon, The people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. Then it will be that of whom I say to you, this one shall go with you, the same shall go with you. And of whomsoever I say to you, this one shall not go with you, the same shall not go. So he brought the people down to the water. And the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone who laps from the water with his tongue, as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink. And the number of those who lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, was 300 men. But all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, very important, by the 300 men who lapped, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, every man to his place. Consider the following. Let us say the Midianites, Amalekites, and the people of the East, we came to... 135,000 soldiers, roughly. 135,000. Let us say they are a debt you have. Let us say you own the bank $135,000. The media nice. They are money now. You own the bank $135,000. Like Gideon, you say, you know what? We have to pay it off. We have to finish we have to take this shame out of my life. I want to pay this debt. Then you go around, you speak to your family, to friends, you go to banks, you get loans. And all you could amount was 32,000. How much is your debt? How much is your debt? 135,000. How much do you have? 32,000. You have a little bit over 20% to pay. 
doesn't pay the debt. But I mean, if you own 135,000 and you pay 32,000, the debtors will be happy. At least we got some money from you. But God says to you, hey, this money will not pay your debt. So take 22,000 and give to me. And then you say, okay, God, I will take 22,000 and I'll give to you. How much are you left with now? $10,000, which is less than 1% of the, I mean, 10% of the, of the total amount of the debt. Still, the creditors will be happy. It is $10,000. You can pay. They will say, hey, you have to pay back. You're paying just the interest here, so you have to pay back. But yet, they'll be happy you're paying something. We'll buy you a lifeline. And God said to Gideon, hey, take the 10,000 now and do this. Take 90,700 and give to me. That's exactly what Gideon did, but not with money, with soldiers. He was left with 300. Now imagine you have a debt, 135,000. And you go to the bank, here's $300. They will spit in your face. <laughs> they will say, I'm not a beggar. I don't want this money. Because it's nothing compared to the amount of money you own. It's impossible for you to pay a debt of that magnitude with $300. As it was impossible for Gideon to overcome a battle against a formidable army of 135,000 only with 300. Nonetheless, God said to Gideon, with these 300 men, I will save you and I will deliver Israel. And Gideon believed. Not without fear, he feared. But nonetheless, he what? Believed. And that's what God wants you to do. God wants you to believe in what he says, however impossible or unlike it seems to be. God wants you to trust. Now, when Gideon sent the fearful and the shy home, when he sent the 9,700 home and was left with 300 men and he was willing at to go and fight, is because he trusted God. And that's what God wants. He wants you to trust him. Because what is impossible will become what? What is impossible will become possible because of your trust. But the trust of Gideon came from somewhere. There was a birthplace of trust. There was a place, there was a time in Gideon's life that he decided to believe God. There was a time in Gideon's life that he decided to put his faith, his trust in God. And there has to be a time you will make the same choice. If you go to chapter 6, one page a few verses backward. Let us go to chapter 6. For you to see the birthplace. Of Gideon's trust in God. If you were here Wednesday. You will identify because you read together with me. So the Bible says in Judges 6.25. Now it came to pass. The same night. That the Lord said to him. To Gideon. Take your father's young bull, the second bull of seven years old, and tear down the altar of Baal that your father has. Cut down the wooden image that is beside it, and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of this rock in the proper arrangement, and take the second bull and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the image which you shall cut down. So Gideon took ten men from among his servants and did as the Lord had said to him. But because he feared his father's household and the men of the city too much to do it by day, he did it by, by night. This was the birthplace. Of trusting God. The trusting God was not because Gideon prayed. 
they trust in God was because of the action he took to destroy the altar of Baal, to cut down the wooden image, to build an altar to God in the proper arrangement, take the wood from the idol they had made, used for, for, for fuel for the fire, and sacrifice the second bull. That's where the trust in God came from. And that's where the trust in God comes from. The trust in God comes from the altar. But not from the prayers you made on the altar. But by the trust of the sacrifice you made where? On the altar. That's where the trust of Gideon came from. Came from the place where God called Gideon to depend on him. When you climb the altar to present your sacrifice... As I said before, your sacrificial offering, an offering which will lead you to depend on whom? God. That will give you the strength you never thought you had. That will give you a confidence you never thought you had. When you go to the altar to depend on God, the spirit which is inside of you goes out and God gives you a new spirit. One that trusts is in him. Because Gideon had the faith to obey what God had said to him. Now he had the faith to obey and go against a formidable enemy with only 300 men. His trust was not based upon a prayer. Many people, they think if I pray enough, God will answer me. But they go from here without much confidence. Confidence is based upon your action towards whom? God. That's the birthplace of trust. Obedience. The people of Israel had not heard the voice of God in a long while. Gideon heard the voice of God. When you hear God's voice, you have an option. Should I follow through with what God says or should I wait? Gideon chose to obey a voice which was not much appreciated in Israel those days. The voice of God was not much appreciated. Nowadays the voice of God is not much appreciated as well. But when you hear God's voice you have a choice. Should I obey or should I not? If you choose to obey what is impossible becomes what? Because God says, your enemies are not your enemies. Now they are my enemies. And that's what God wants to do. The Bible says, and we're going to talk about this another day. When Gideon came to face the Midianites, Amalekites, and the people of the east. The Bible says they had in their hand a jar. They had a torch, and the jar was covering the torch. Covering the torch, so no one could see them. And the, and the trumpet as well. And the Bible says the time of war, they broke the jar and the, the torch now was showing. And they blew the trumpet and shouted, the sword of the Lord. They shouted, the sword of the Lord. And the sword of Gideon. And do you know what they did next? They stopped and they stood still. And God went and fought for them. The enemies killed themselves. And the reminder left. That's what happens when you trust in God. What you have may not be enough. But because you are depending on God. God is enough. Because you are depending on God. God is enough. And this dependence comes from there. Out. God did not call Gideon to come to the altar and pray. He called Gideon to come to the altar and destroy the altar of Baal, cut the wooden image, build an altar in the proper arrangements, and on that altar make an unthinkable sacrifice. What his father had kept for their future. 
That's what a sacrifice is. And that's what leads you to trust in God so much that you go against 135,000 with only 300. The birthplace of this trust is the, the altar. And ask God for one thing if you don't have it. The Holy Spirit. The Bible says, seek first. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God, his righteousness. And all the other things shall be added unto you. First, the Holy Spirit. After, let him guide you. Ask him for direction for your life. He will give you a direction. Perhaps that's you, a person without a direction. So God is saying to you, I will be your God. I will be the one fighting the battles. You go as far as the altar. Depend on me. And get ready. Because you will take possession of your victory. Amen.